Hi, Pina. Thank you so much for taking out the time uh, today. Uh, we at Nandits in India Magazine are so happy to have you on board. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh -huh. So before we get into, you know, how AI kind of uh, works in movies, like beyond uh, just being a part of uh, uh, the cinema, but in, in the whole process of uh, making it, we'd love to know a little bit about you, you know, what, what, what has your journey been like and how did it kind of lead you to where you are today? Thank you for the question. Um, I have a background in multidisciplinary artists. I had my work shown in museums, um, galleries, you know, like your regular artist. My specialty has always been um, very broad interest to a variety of different image creation techniques. Mm -hmm. Before I was introduced to AI back in 2017, I had a, I made stained glass windows for a Jewish synagogue. I made the world's first, uh, I have been in an artist partnership, so it's actually we. Um, I used to uh, be in this partnership called Pinar and Viola. So um, we had a collection under our name in all IKEAs in the world, 25 pieces of uh, mm -hmm. from cups to beddings, um, like graphics, very interesting graphics. And then I made the world's uh, first catwalk for a mixed reality fashion line. So from high technology, to high artisanal craftsmanship. I have always been intrigued by different surfaces and different ways of image making techniques. But then my life changed in 2017 when we received an email from Google uh, uh, Arts and Culture in Paris that was working with Google Brain Zurich, uh, their AI center, saying that they accidentally invented a new way of image creation and they are not an art company, they're a tech company, so they don't know what to do with that. And it looks like my body of work as an artist. Like I create, um, uh, I created really intricate, very quantum, very um, ecstatic surfaces on my own. You know, we, we did it together. I did it together with my ex-partner. And then it ended up looking like uh, the very first conception of AI art by Google. So that's really a life-changing, that was a life-changing moment in time for me. And uh, the engineer that invented this, um, maybe the ones that will be listening to this interview would know who he is. His name is Alexander Morvincev. He is a super genius uh, AI engineer that also invented Deep Dream in 2015. So it's impossible to purely coin the invention of AI art, what not, because it's like a super organic process. That starts from 1950s in, with the work of Vera Molnar. Uh, she's an artist, like first like attempt to generative art, but then this whole time uh, there was a heavy like fear towards AI because of Hollywood and news, whatnot, so AI winter. And then the research started picking up around 2014 uh, with NVIDIA and Google. So NVIDIA came out with uh, um, GANs by uh, I am Goodfellow, Generative Adversarial Networks. Around that time, Google came out with Deep Dream and then with this 2017 future visualization, which is like future, you know, things have futures around us. So in 2017, Alex invented or invented, discovered how neural networks slowly visualize futures, like how like future of a glass, like how does it look like? And then that can be like uh, perceived by us as like uh, the, the best human so far came to understanding human perception. Like how do, we, how, how do we perceive the world around us? Like when I look at you, I see an office, I see a face, but like, like there's a very tiny millisecond goes on in my brain recognizing that this is a white office and this is a human face. So that was... Uh, humanity's first attempt to visualize perception. And that ended up looking at like my body of work. So I started working with Google and then they made a, a special online tool for everybody to make art like us, um, run by AI. And we made, we ended up making artworks like such, like, please look at this. Like, as you will see, like, this is an oil painting by us. Um, and then you can recognize that these 
like these are shells, but originally these shells are made by AI. The composition are made by humans, me and my ex-work partner, uh, but some elements are made by AI. So this was really a super interesting collaboration with uh, machine and humans, generative art and humans. And then uh, Google invited me to speak at their IO, their biggest conference in 2019. Uh, we were the only artists to speak. Like I was the only artist to speak um, at that conference. So this was the beginning of my journey. My, I, I don't think that I found AI. AI really found me. Like I, I was just like being an artist, doing my own thing, you know, just painting, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that back then, like 2017, I was like, this is really like generative stuff is really gonna change uh, the way we perceive the world around us, the way we interact, the way we make sense of the world around us. Around that same time, also spirituality found me. I was in a very um, uh, deep depression time of my life. I was not doing well and I was looking for an answer and I was seek seeking it in many different places from a Hindu temple to uh, meditation to yoga. I, I tried really many, many things from ayahuasca to mushrooms. And, but then I found a teacher, my spiritual teacher who showed me uh, the depths of my subconscious and taught me how I can change my character, my personality and my happiness by changing my subconsciousness. So these two things like subconsciousness and AI, I saw a lot of parallels in the workings of data sets and our subconsciousness, but that's another interview. And I, I very regularly write about my discoveries about my awakening journey and my discoveries in uh, by working with AI in my blog and medium. But so to say that I realized that the more uh, I uh, became a different version of myself, the more I saw other people around me that were seeking for uh, conscious enlightenment. And then, you know, these things are very intangible because as humans, the way, we the way we make sense of the world is quantifying. We measure like how long is God two inches length and then seven inches height. Like, you know, it doesn't work like that. But then these, I realized that AI helps us thanks to its parallel processing nature, creativity that is made with AI helps us visualize these unquantifiable notions which is like enlightenment, enlightenment, awakening, creativity, or feelings, emotions, astral journeys, um, dreams. So that was my very first intent towards uh, AI creativity back in 2018. I was like, okay, here it is, finally, a way for us to visualize these untangible worlds. But then my interest grow into filmmaking. I mean, I was living, in Europe, an artist, you know, that has a background in like, you know, cool cultural stuff. And I wanted to bring this notion to movies. Then, then I met my work partner, current work partner, who's also my life partner, Gary Kepke. He's a very known in the United States um, advertising executive. He owned a, his own agency, Modernista. He made short films for many, many brands. He made brands, including uh, Gap and uh, Hummer, uh, he helped, uh, he played a big role in selling uh, Converse to Nike. Like, like he comes from advertising and filmmaking background. And then my background in technology and art, we came together and established our company 2020 in the midst of COVID, um, Sehan Lee, where we, we thought, okay, let's, let's make a lab. Let's get the latest um, image making techniques with generative art. Let's start making our own models. And then uh, let's combine, let's educate filmmakers, let's educate producers, directors that are seeking for uh, uh, visual effects that open up into the world of the unknown. I mean, currently, um, as you must know, the beginning of photography, I see a lot of parallels with the invention of photography and the discovery of, uh, of generative uh, network creativity. Because in the beginning of photography, uh, when you could capture and play with the aperture, you could visualize things that the real world couldn't offer you. Like, for example, if you would play with aperture, you could visualize ghosts as if, you know, like by moving like that, it felt like you were seeing a ghost. And like there was a lot of creativity in the beginning of the invention of photography. And then motion picture and film is invented. And then 
the whole the rest is story then photography affects all areas of creativity and non-creativity in our lives and then it it bore uh, it gave birth to motion pictures as we understand right now as it is the very first days of very first beginning of a, a generative network there's a lot of creativity involved like we are like as i said like it is my own take to visualize non-visible words like consciousness but a lot of other creators are experimenting with a bunch of other things some some are trying to summon demons you know like or what that like everybody is uh, like whatever creativity you're doing is parallel to your own consciousness levels but then if we were to talk about much more serious things we're also experimenting in uh, generating uh, like everybody's talking metaverse 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 replicating the world in metaverse like like do you realize what it takes to replicate to make a replica of our world in digital creativity it's like still like digit of course like you have unreal engine and whatnot other sort of generative tools that are helping like to build cities like the other day i uh, listened to uh the making of uh, matrix how they generated the city out of like by building only i don't want to lie but like 15 buildings and then they created the whole city how it is done generatively which is fantastic but then the type of generative work we are involved we are experimenting with we are currently testing generating avatars only by words a pink elephant holding the hand of a pikachu that is holding the hand of a chair in the form of an avocado whatever you can make these things in 3d poly mesh in polygons you can make these things in polygons i mean of course it is at its infancy so it's a bit sloppy but give it two years and we'll be able to i think recreate um whatever um george clooney um running running with brad pitt in a desolate uh, new york city landscape of course this is like super tech i'm always very interested in like hyper creativity so this is more like uh, taking the workload off uh but they two can go together the mind and the spirit right you know i mean that i mean your journey sounds really cool but yeah you know, i'd like to go back a little step to the the time that you know you you received that phone call from google now i mean seeing artists and having grown up with some like it, it's like i can't i can't imagine what it would mean to them to get a random email or a phone call from the google telling that look we have accidentally stumbled upon what could be you know the next big thing and we'd like your help I, i would like to know a little bit more about that conversation and how did you kind of even process that because google is complete tech and you came from a complete artistic side how i mean and how did you even you know catch up i mean i i know very few artists unless they are playing with ai already i don't think they would be very familiar with what gans are or what neural networks are i mean how did you kind of make up that kind of a, a, a knowledge gap um thank you for the question i think uh, i uh, i'm i'm i have a lot of belief in the creator in the I don't think we made this world um a um a divine power enabled this beautiful world where we live in and I also know that uh the divine creator opens doors to you when you want to see them if you let's say that if you have a wish like if you want to make great things happen in this world you are given a set of talent within like uh, I have whatsoever no talent in astrophysics like i know i'm i'm not i'm not interested in uh, you know rocket machinery or coding um but i know what i am interested i'm interested in visual culture i'm interested in uh, very interested in filmmaking i'm very compelled by myth making storytelling and uh, visual effects like that has always been like my uh, like my research my own certain my personal education as i told you i was in a artist partnership with another artist and she has always been interested in painting you know like a uh, something uh, really handmade artisanal her paint and herself so 
where two different individuals uh, interested in two separate things were forming a duo. So when we received this call from Google, of course it is like compelling. Like first we didn't really understand like what it means. So I had to read like probably five books in two weeks about what is machine learning, what is AI. I, I have no idea, you know, it's like, you might as well introduce me chi to Chinese. I don't understand, you know? So I had to learn Chinese basically. So they said, this is perception, this is da da da. So two weeks were pr probably like pure education because we had to came up with a proposal. They said, let's, let's connect. We, we have a sample in our hands, but we don't know how to connect it with the audience. So here is like cool art looking stuff, but what is its meaning? What do we do with this, you know? So, and then we had to come up with a proposal. And then in, so two weeks I had to educate myself and then two other weeks I had to come up with something that made sense for my brother or my mother about this art making technique. And uh, what I'm saying is that like God always opens doors for you, it's up, but it's up to you to recognize them. So I know that that door that was open to us as an artist duo was a door for me because my work partner was not really interested in technology or filmmaking. You know, it was a door for me and it took me to be ready to be see that to see that door. I bet that, like for example, in uh, when was that? 2012. As an artist, you we have always been very interested in novel technologies. Like we are, I can say that we are one of the first people to do something creative with face mask technologies, like what Snapchat offers us right now. But just to give a perspective, in 2011, we made a music video for Diplo. He's a famous DJ. Uh, I don't know if you know, and then um, with a face mask, face face filter. So my work partner filmed me. So I was as if I was, um, I was a bunny. So there was a bunny mask. And then we had these um, dogs chasing me, but then I was on the other side of the screen. So the dogs couldn't catch me. And this ended up being an, an official music video for Diplo. And then he released a face filter for her wild uh, naked girl fans to make pictures for him while having this bunny mask. And then we were like back in 2011, here is, I'm just telling this door that I didn't see, that was open to me that I didn't see. And then I came up with an idea. Why don't we make like an app? Back in the days, it was harder to make apps, but like a phone app or a um, computer, like a desktop app, where we turn you into a zoo where you get to communicate with your friends. So I accidentally came up with Snapchat idea in 2011, just to give you the perspective, Snapchat is founded in 2014. And then we were like, yeah, it will take too much time to, I just needed like 50 grand to make Snapchat, you know, back in the days, according to my head. But then I got lazy and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to keep on inventing as an artist, as like a business plan and whatnot. And, and then I, of course, kicked myself for not pursuing my dream, you know? And then I promised myself that if ever, like the creator opens another like big door for me, I would like to pursue that that time. So when we received this mail, of course, from Google, yeah, it took me very little time to recognize this time as I made a mistake that I don't want to repeat again. It took me little time to recognize uh, another door. So, but then I started like um, praying, I think, for like, um, I mean, I want to make movies, I want to make films, I want to bring this into the center of uh, myth making and introduce this with different directors. And, and then, of course, Gary, my current life and work partner, him entering in my life was, of course, another door. And then me moving to United States from Europe for this so it all came following i hope i answered your question if i please if i forgot something please let me know yes i mean yeah, that, that was really beautiful and uh, moving uh and you know uh when when you initially walked in uh to google what 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 was the exact thing that they presented to you? I'm assuming it is something that was, you know, at a very nascent stage, very in a, in a very crude stage. So what was it that was shown to you telling that, look, this is what we have created? Yeah, um, that was, uh, so Alex was there, the very inventor of, uh, uh, if, for those that are technically interested, distill.pop. It was uh, the, paper, the lab that, um, 
lab that Google engineers were um, releasing about their inventions in machine learning research, especially visual research. So distill.pub, it's still active. Sorry, it's not active anymore, but the website is still on, so you can have a look. So Alex explained to us what a, a future visualization is, how he, it's a version of Deep Dream, but don't ask me technical explanation. I don't want to say, I don't want to mislead people, but it's basically how uh, he mimicked artificial neural networks. Uh, he mimicked uh, perception with artificial neural networks in his uh, search to uh, visualize how artificial neural networks build up features, future visual, like baseball, how do you, how does a neural network recognize a baseball ball versus a golf ball? How, like, what are the differences? So this accident, this whatever, this like accident in his uh, seek for, in his search for recognizing futures, it's an accident art. So they look very artistic. These, these are very artistic images, but of course they have no meaning unless you put meaning on them. And um, so then we came up, me and my ex-work partner, we came up with the idea of these look like fashion patterns absolutely fashion prints if you if you if you like and then alex helped us like together with us alex uh, made an um a tool that's still open for everybody to use if you google infinite patterns and google is the first is a google hit it's an experiment like um, um alex created this um how is it called like a like a very easy tune up like a slide this bar left slide this bar right like a interface mm -hmm. for us non-coders to create uh, fashion patterns uh with that ai tool and then it became like a public art tool and then artists started experimenting with that and and then my interest grew of course like i realized that this whole like ai thing like was happening in twitter it, even like in 2017 it was all in twitter so i started following like uh people that were at the earliest experimentations of AI art, like Gene Kogan, Memo Akten, um, Alex, of course. And I started following everybody that they are following. To my knowledge, like when things became too technical, I, I lost my train of thought, of course. And then, then uh, I reached out to Gene, who, Gene Kogan to do, a, um, to do a music video with him. Back in the days, there were no music video made with AI. Uh, so. I, I think the first music video made with AI, I think we made it. I can safely say that Alex was also, Alex also did something else, but it was, his was uh, launched a month later, I think. And then I started collaborating with other uh, AI artists in uh, making super artistic music videos, one after the other. Um, I mean, I may be together with others, one of the earliest adopters, but like, and then um, I think with, the help of NVIDIA with the GPUs, of course, without parallel processing, there is no AI. So things became like in the beginning, like in 2019, we trained our own uh, GAN for the first time. Of course, we trained like uh, AI, uh, sorry, Google made uh, these public GAN data sets available for us to train. But then we took on the load of training our own GAN, um, underwater sea creatures for the music video we made for ASCII. And that took like three months. And, and of course, with the power of the machines growing and then our machines learning, now it takes way less, like a couple of weeks to train a custom GAN. So yeah, it's things. And then now there's like way more super interesting things that you can experiment with like JAX, Disco Diffusion, of course, Daniel's uh, Mid Journey and whatnot. It's, it's just growing and every other day something uh, much more interesting is popping up and um, we're hoping to contribute to uh, this field with our own papers very soon as well. Right, right, Pinar. So, I mean, fast forward uh, from, you know, the initial days to where we are at today. I mean, while there are, you know, tools uh, that, you know, all the tools that you just uh, mentioned, uh, you know, we, we have... Uh, there have been a lot of controversies, especially with things like, you know, Dali 2 and, uh, you know, other uh, open, uh, semi-open source 
tools that lets you create art. There's a lot of, uh, you know, questions on what can be created, how, because, you know, the tool essentially doesn't know what it's supposed to do or what's supposed, what it's not supposed to do, what's supposed to present and uh, things like that. So what are your comments on the way these things are being, you know, built right now? Um, that's a very deep question. Thank you. Um, in one sentence, um, technologies when not coupled with wisdom are detrimental for humanity. I can give a perfect example, which is the atomic bomb. I mean, humanity can split the atom, fantastic. We can do great things. We can make planes, we can make tall buildings. We can split the atom. We can fasten atoms like the hydrogen collider, but unless they are coupled with wisdom, they end up being detrimental for humanity. Another example, uh, IBM was first presented as uh, making census, counting people faster, but then it ended up being the very tool to locate Jewish people faster. Or social media, of course, it is like fantastic for reaching our relatives that live on the other side of the world. But then the very creator of Matrix, the co-creator of Matrix, Lana Wachowski, she has a Twitter account and her bio reads, warning my civic the sacrifice of my civic life shall have value the very creator of matrix thinks of social media as a sacrifice of her civic life and then like Jeroen Lanier coins it unless like a like social media the very word should be replaced as behavior modification empires like these algorithms are toying with our uh, sense of self-worth, like constant instant gratification. Like if we're like we're currently, like a lot of people, especially youth, are seeking for self-validation by the other in digital realms. So going back to AI and DALI and all the algorithms, what we're doing with them, there's a lot of new um, image generation techniques that are popping up by the world's uh, biggest technology companies, open AI with his Dali and Clip and a, a mid journey by a single individual that is very talented, but then Imagen by um, Google. So what I would like to ask from the viewer or from the one, ones that are using, we should demand conscious contemplations, like why the world's biggest technology companies are giving to us these funny ways of image making techniques. Like unless, I mean, but as a company owner, Unless, unless a gigantic innovation serves your business model that brings you revenue, you don't toy, just toy with play. You don't play with stuff just because it's funny. Like, I want to ask, why do you think they are experimenting with image so far? Like, I think there are a lot of tools, but there are very little conscious contemplations that are available to us. Like, why? What are, what are the ramifications of us being able to uh come up with like whatever make joe biden say anything i want what what is the consequence of that that's that's kind of one of the questions i had for you <laughs> you know i mean <laughs> Uh, given that a lot of these things are free to use, they're open source, they come with no consequences for uh, the general public per se, then what's the exact benefit for the maker itself? Then it's not revenue. It's not, I mean, it seems like nothing. What, what, what's your thought on that? Well, for, I cannot speak for technology companies because of course I'm not familiar with their business model and I don't want to assume nor judge about their own uh, intentions, but uh, given there are a lot of knowledge available about the business model of these technology companies and one can make uh, opinions on their own. Like Google is a technology company that owns um, your, that it has a company, that, uh, it has a private company that is like, a, that can open or close your home lock. It has a cell phone. And it has another software that is listening to you in your home and that is turning the lights on or off while it is a search engine company. And the owners made it very public that they established the Google search engine 
to become the data set of the central general intelligence, like the, the AGI that they would like to wish to establish later in the future. So one that like somebody that has a broad imagination and a, a business mindset can very easily make up ideas in their minds about why this technology company is uh, coming up with these image models, but I don't wish to uh, utter them. I would like people to come up with their own uh, ideas. I think that's much more fun. But about uh, why in the artistic way, why we are doing that. I mean, of course it's, it's very nice to, um, I think there's a lot of stigma around creativity, which is like uh, people that did not, there's a lot of stigma around being human, excuse me to be first, which is like, we humans, we have always, uh, uh, always looked at the other for greatness. Sports athletes, uh, Superman, you know, like being like these superheroes or uh, musicians being like role models or gods that are superior to us. Like we have always, it's, in, it's coded in our subconsciousness that humanity is inferior. We are mere mortals. What do you mean mere mortals? We're the greatest mortals. Like at all times when humanity has been compared itself, not that comparison is interesting, but at all times, we have been pronounced next to, next to something. We have always compared ourselves as the inferior part. Gods, role models, the other, even, even our neighbor, we're always jealous of the other for the things that we don't have. And AI right now, I've been witnessing a lot of unfortunate, um, again, the same like inferiority complex in humans which is like, a, oh yeah, AI, greatest AI created that, AI did that, AI did this, AI did that. Again, just another, just another master to hit our chains, you know? But we forget that we did that. Humanity gave birth to AI. A group of humans invented AI. A group of humans coded AI in such a way that we can generate Tom Cruise's face, you know? It is that we did that. So the conscious contemplations that I'm asking of the audience that is working with AI is that if ever, like all of your life is a manifestation of your belief system. If you believe that you're an ugly woman and then men are superior to you, whatever, you know, I'm just saying nonsense. You will be pairing yourself with a man that will humiliate you and you will constantly tell you that you are ugly. So we manifest what we believe. If we believe that AI can generate these amazing things and humans cannot create, and then we are inferior and AI has this mind and then we don't, especially if we are the next generation of responsibles of like policymakers or the software engineers that are working with AI, unconsciously, we will give birth to an AI that will annihilate humanity or that will enslave humanity, that will be like, Oh, you didn't pay your taxes, home lock closed. You can't enter in your home. Why? Because it makes sense to me because you are inferior. So AI is placed in a pedestal in a position to decide that when you do not pay your taxes, you cannot go and see your mother in your self-driving uh, Google machine, you know, or, oh, you didn't do your jury duty. Oh, sorry. The lights in your house will be closed. Oh, sorry, you work with cryptocurrencies or your wealth is in a cryptocurrency in a centralized one world government. Beep, your entire wealth is set off. Do your jury duty, pay your taxes and obey. And only then we will activate all your digital AI, general intelligence linked uh, assets. So that's why conscious contemplations are extremely important. We're like currently laughing like, oh, look at Google. I made an astronaut holding a brain cell in his hand, like, ha, ha, ha. But it's like, it's like much more serious than that, you know? Like, I think for a very long time, humanity ha has been kept asleep with entertainment. You know, here is like, here is a policy change about your future of your welfare. While we have Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's divorce trial to keep you entertained. You know, I think there is much more serious and much more, conscious contemplation requiring activity going on when it comes to AI, but we are currently being kept entertained by being able to generate a monkey 
holding a pink elephant in his hands. Right, right. I mean, you know, like uh, going, uh, coming back to the, um, you know, inferior, uh, superior uh, thought that you had, you know, I come from a rather, you know, the dead opposite uh, thought process, especially when I think about AI taking over the creative side. Now, like back in the day when researchers were initially experimenting with this, creativity was supposed to be the last human aspect AI was supposed to touch. But apparently it became the first one and creativity, like even art per se, that, that's something that comes from the deepest corners of human, um, you know, human abilities, human body, soul, any, any, what have you. How is it that, you know, like, isn't that bothersome that another system is able to create something and least of all, we don't know what it's thinking, what's the thought process. If you're an artist, you're made a paint, I can talk to you, I can understand about your art. I, I cannot expect the same out of a Dali too. It could be offensive, it could be anything for that matter. Mm -hmm. And though it is not human, it kind of has, it's kind of displaying a little bit of aspects that perhaps most of us don't have as humans. Isn't that a little worrisome? Yeah, good question. Uh, it's a very deep and complex question. I completely agree with you that uh, art is a vessel for divine creation to express itself in human consciousness. Nothing else, all art is divine. Um, I always believe that humanity walks with a, it's a metaphor, with a strainer on top of our heads, you know, because divine intervention is always around us. But it's uh, according to our, to the holes of our strainer that we can receive divine intervention. If, our, if the holes of our strainer are very tiny, meaning if we are judgmental or if we demean ourselves, if we feel ourselves inferior or like we're in deep depression, we do not receive the light of God. As, as much as the ones that are like so open and then like trusting themselves and like happy and positive. So answering to your question, uh, yes, in, I agree with you, all art is divine and all art is relating to human consciousness. But then I would like to disillusion something, which is AI does not create, sorry, shit. AI creates nothing. AI creates nothing. Let me say it again. AI creates nothing. Creativity, if you say, if you use the word AI, creating something, that means that you did not understand creativity yet. All creativity is divine. AI, AI is, a, is just a mere paintbrush. Like I actually crediting AI should be equal to crediting a paintbrush or to crediting a camera. When have we like Helmut Newton? Okay, Helmut Newton or whatever, David, David LaChapelle, whatever, like, some, like, a, like an amazing photographer that you admire so much. When have, has this uh, artist wrote, I took that with Nikon or whatever camera, da, 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 da. I mean, it's great. It's great the cameras that you're using, but, or Stanley Kubrick. In which book that you read about Stanley Kubrick that you read the cameras that he's been using? It's irrelevant. It's really irrelevant. I mean, sorry, it's not irrelevant. If ever there are cinematographers that are listening to me, please do not be offended. But next to the divine intervention that uh, Stanley Kubrick put out as films, who cares about the, which camera that he used? You know, it's just like, or the props that he used or the set, it's all like part of his, uh, of his, uh, of his scenery as, a, as, a, as an architect. But what we are doing is that I would like to propose a new point of view. Um, the very, let's say that one person invented a model. Like I, I wanna give, I wanna give the, uh, actually mid journey is invented one, by one single person, uh, Daniel Russell. He's a digital friend of mine. He's a friend of mine. I mean, he's a wonderful uh, loving human being. It took one person to come up with mid journey. In my op opinion, the very art that he bore, that he gave birth to is mid-journey. For me, him being able to come up with mid-journey is the very art itself. So his model is his art because mid-journey didn't invent itself. Like it is 
piggybacking on uh, years of research by OpenAI in Clip. It's a it's a model that draws Clip. So the very so the art we are doing, the machine is not doing that art. Again, the machine is not doing an art. And if ever you you put together a hundred different people with the same uh, let, let's say that if you tell them visualize happiness to me, visual like happiness will be perceived with a hundred different ways by a hundred different people using the same generative model. So the model is just a paintbrush enabling the consciousness of these hundred different people expressing themselves. Plus, the like by using the art, by using the creativity of Daniel that invented a model. So I think we have been used so much to place ourselves as the inferior to non-existence, non-validating the human talent, that even, even a tool, just a tool like AI, when it is helping us create new wondrous creations, we are still crediting the AI. We are still creating the tool, cre crediting the tool. Right, right. And if we, you know, definitely like AI doesn't, at least right now, the kind, uh, the kind of current narrow intelligence that we do have in the market, it doesn't essentially create anything. It's more of a mirror of everything it learns. So mm -hmm. doesn't that make the whole definition of AI an issue? I mean, it's not essentially intelligence, depending on how we would yeah, define right. intelligence. So, I mean, a lot of things are... Uh, have gone wrong and which has led to this odd stigma around AI and that kind of begin, goes back all the way to the way we have defined it. Well, um, fear sells, right? Fear and sex sells. Fear, violence and sex sells. So 2001, Stanley Kubrick, Space Odyssey, Hal kills you. Hall is jealous of the relationship of two men and kills you. Uh, Terminator, um, like human subconsciousness, first introduction to artificial intelligence is fear that it will kill us, that it will take over us and whatnot. And it is very intelligent beings. Hollywood told us that it is intelligence. So we believed. Uh, there is, I, I agree with you, uh, a, a, a fast parallel processing machine that runs on batteries. For me, nothing that does not bear the light of the creator cannot be deemed as intelligent. That's like parody. For me, that's parody. Parallel processing is not intelligence. It is fast computation power. It's like humans are, humans, human lives are usually parody. We glamorize everything but ourselves. We put value on others, everything but ourselves. Like humanity, the word, like if we keep on using the word artificial intelligence, humans might as well be called everything but us. You know, we, we value everything but ourselves. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the word artificial intelligence should be replaced by parallel processor, high computational parallel processors running on batteries. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, if, I mean, going by that, uh, you know, I mean, just uh, this saying, like, you know, if, even the title at your company, AI director, would be a very a massive overhaul. I mean, you seem like the kind of person who kind of perceives AI as more of a tool, a software, something as you know, an artist would do a Photoshop. Yes, exactly. So. How and but this thing yet fundamentally works different from all these other software tools. So at your company, what's your process? I mean, how are you in one way making strides in creating art using the software, but on the other end, help spread awareness, kind of break through the stigma that we have around it? Yeah, good question. Um Again, humanity gave birth to AI and AI is a quantum tool. It's a parallel processing tool. It's a quantum tool. That's why it's maybe the only tool that can generate things. Before that, we didn't have generating things. Like we were holding a brush and then we were painting or we were holding a camera, we were clicking. We were holding a 
motion picture camera and we were filming, but it is the first tool that humanity gave birth to that can generate things on its own where the human puts meaning if this is valuable or not. This is a very powerful tool, really. It's as powerful as splitting the atom. If we were not to use it consciously, we can create detrimental results like the atomic bomb. That's my, my belief. Like it is time for humanity to start thinking quantum. What is that? What does it mean to start thinking quantum? To stop having a linear point of view in life, which is yesterday, today, tomorrow, Panar, sofa, green background, or me and my work partner, my life partner, my friends, like, like really high religious concepts that are common to all religions offer this point of view that we are all one, right? Like we hear that no matter where you are coming from, I'm Muslim. Um, I don't know if you are Muslim, Hindu, or whatever your background is. Like this is common to all religions that we are one, that separation is illusion, and that we are one with nature, nature cycles. But these are concepts that have been totally negated in our linear, linear Newtonian, uh, materialistic, mechanistic, uh, Descartian point of view, point of life, which is my muscles and then my hair and then myself. Like we always negated human consciousness when it came to our perception of reality. And the age of AI forces us, if we want to remain relevant, and if we do not want to become the toy of AI, it forces us to become our quantum selves. It forces us to be wondrous of our consciousness. What is consciousness? What does it mean to become one with the other? What does it become one with the creator? These high concepts like spirituality, this is like spirituality and consciousness is the power of humans. But we have been so long negating that negating that, making fun of that, you know, like so much negating that we were making fun of spirituality and, uh, and consciousness. So a very regular uh, workflow in our company, we have a chief wisdom officer. We have a wise woman. Um, she's our consciousness teacher. She teaches us the depths of our subconsciousness the width of the consciousness. She teaches us about the creator. She teaches us about understanding our potential. Um, she teaches us how to speak, how to behave, how to think positively. So the more we are, of course, like, of course, like I can technically speak to you till tomorrow night about how we are learning about like machine learning and whatnot. But when you compare them with the depth of human consciousness, they are so irrelevant to me. They're so tiny to me. Like, of course, we are like educating ourselves about machine learning, about we're like pushing the boundaries of what is possible with technical inventions. We invest in uh, new models. We hire pe new people every time we have a new assignment. Teams to invent new models. Like, okay, fine. But none is valuable if you put yourself in a position of uh, using this for the well being of human advancement for, for uh, elevation of human consciousness. So we are putting an equal attention, actually more attention in expanding our own capacity as human beings to consistently use these technologies for the elation of humankind. That, that's a you know, great thought process of our end. You know, every uh, AI leader, if I may have spoken to, I kind of, ask them this one general question, given our odd obsession with achieving, building AGI, there is also the reality that we barely understand ourselves. How do we possibly think that we can A, create some being that can be like us, but mechanically, and then B, assume that we are gonna control it, even though it is by definition far superior than us. So given that there are so many gaps to fill, is that really, should that really be the race we should be running? And this is like a worldly race. Every single person is either contributing to it or actively building it. That is the very definition of divine comedy. That is the, that is the parody of divine comedy. 
humanity, instead of understanding the creator, they are trying to play the God. That is the parody. And that will be their own annihilation. Like any human that tries to play the God without understanding God is doomed to create its own annihilation. You will, because un unless you understand the majesty of creation, you will at all times position yourself as inferior and put the machine in a superior position. Or, or that you will be the system, like the, one, the ones that have always been. Like this, there's a system that has been going on for aeons, like from Sumerians to from Middle Ages to our date. Like there has always been an elite and there has always been a people that have been in an inferior position to the elite. Unless we wake up to our own value, the ones that are in power, the elite, will code and we will enable them. We will allow them to code AI in a superior position because nothing changed, right? We're still inferior. We have always been inferior. And unless we wake up to our own consciousness and our divine nature, we will always remain inferior. So we will allow the elite to code AGI, superior and controlling and autocratic um, despot, despotly uh, governing us. We will allow that. So unless we wake up to our own value, we will only widen the gap between the elite and the people. But I don't believe in that scenario. That's like for science fiction novels and whatnot. We live in the age of consciousness, the age of Aquarius that started in 2020. You, you're seeing like enlightenment, right? Like, like ask your grandmother or ask your mother back in her days, has she ever heard the word ascension, enlightenment, waking up? These words didn't mean almost nothing, you know, in the, I mean, of course, like in niche circles, they always meant something, but like they were not that much like uh, adopted by the masses. Like currently, like uh, back in the days, there were so much limitation or, or we never heard sentences such as, oh, that person is too negative. Like currently we're saying, I don't want to hang out with him. He's too negative. Do you think that your mother said such sentences? I don't think so. It was all like, suck it up be like others, follow the rule, follow the system, follow the program. We don't want to do things like we used to do back in the days. We are waking up. So I know that the more, the more humanity is waking up, the more we will code AI to be uh, serving us, to be serving, serving our own elation instead of serving AI and the system's deep need to suppress humanity. Uh, and, you know, perhaps as, you know, an artist yourself and now, you know, an AI company uh, owner, uh, what is it that you aspire to do the most today and what keeps you up at night? Oh, so cool. Um, AI and technology serving the elation of humankind. I have nothing that keeps me up at night. I have nothing that keeps me up at night other than people waking up to their own power. I constantly felt inferior when I was living in Europe. It's not a country thing. It's just like, it's just the geolocation. Uh, until four years ago, until I discovered consciousness, AI is secondary. AI is like whatever, like a brush. I can't care less. I'm not glamorized. I'm not impressed by it's like Hollywood, whatever glamour. It's just a tool for me. What is the most important thing that changed my life is to wake up to my power, is to take my power in my hands. I always give the power of my life in the hands of others. He does not give me. She does not pay me. They do not respect me. They do not compliment me. They do not award me. Only to realize after teaching myself my own power, realizing my own power, started loving myself, I realized that nobody gives you shit in life. You always go and take it. You take the award that you deserve because you know you deserve that award. You go take the million dollars that you always dreamt of, dreamt of because it's not their money, it is your money. You give your value in exchange of their money. Your value is $1 million. And then, you do not make any, like you, you, of course, like nobody gives you their love or whatnot, 
your love for yourself pairs with the love of others that they have for themselves and you become life partners or friendships. So what keeps me up at night is to tell people the journey that I had to go from constantly feeling inferior, uh, poverty consciousness, uh, victim consciousness, to be the sovereign of my own life, to be on the driving seat of my own life. That's why by using, I mean, AI is just a tool. Again, um, we are currently uh, working on establish, establishing centers of spiritual wisdom all over the world to tell people the journey that they shall start walking on, the journey of self-sovereignty to, uh, to be on the driving seat of their own lives. So in short, um, to be the co-owner of an AI company, what keeps me up at night is, to, is how to make people more conscious, how to have their own power in their own hands, because I understand, I deeply understand the power of the AI, unless we wake up to our own power. Well said, Vinar. And before we conclude, we do a bit of a rapid fire round <laughs> where I ask you some questions like away from technology, AI, I mean, not completely away from it, but a little bit to understand you on a little more personal level. So as the name suggests, uh, the answers have to be extremely spontaneous. Okay. Right? Yes. All right. Um, if not for an artist and now a co-owner of uh, an AI movie uh, production house, what would we not be doing? Um, helping people one way or the other. I don't know what it is. Helping people, uh, discovering talents probably. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Your funniest moment uh, while experimenting with AI. Um, oh my God, you, you called me off guard. Funniest moment. I don't know. Let me think about it. Um, funny, I don't have, but I have crazy. Does crazy help? It works. <laughs> okay, I have crazy. Uh, that was when Google made that tool where I was experimenting to make paintings and uh, tools. I put a yantra. And it gave me a Turkish carpet. And then I put a Buckminster Fuller molecule and AI gave me a turtle. I put another Buckminster Fuller molecule and AI gave me snake skin. And I researched, you know, these things that, uh, these patterns that repeat themselves in nature then I got myself into this whole, like, um, in educating myself, these patterns that repeat themselves. Another one, I put Nautilus shell, and I swear to God, it gave me evolution. Parrots, dinosaurs, whatnot, like everything. So I, like, when, when I say give it, like, as an input, I put Nautilus, and then as an uh, output, I received evolution. As an input, I put a yantra, um, like tantric yantra, and then as a result, I received a Turkish carpet. That was a crazy moment. Wow, that's great. And the, what, what, what would you say is the weirdest project that you've worked on, probably using AI or not? As an artist, what is by far the oddest request that perhaps you've gotten from a client or a person who admires your artwork and it makes something oh. nice for me? Odd? Oh, all this plenty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> everything is odd in a wonderful way. Um, well, yes. Okay, here it is. Big fan. Um, they are a metaverse gaming company. They're like the poster child of blockchain. Uh, running on Solana. It's a game that hasn't been launched yet. Uh, but they leverage $200 million dollars plus by selling NFTs that will be utilized in the game. Um, we met one of the owners and then he challenged us with such a huge challenge. Uh, he, he were to be part of um, 
very important Solana blockchain conference. This was last year and uh, in Barcelona. And then he said that uh, in that room, there will be decision makers, like the very makers of blockchain. Either they will give blood. I want you to make such a movie for us, for Star Atlas, for the diehard belief of Star Atlas, that if ever they are thinking of giving blockchain to the elite, the ones in power to enslave humanity, they should change their minds after watching the film you will make for us, that they should give it to the people because the very motto of Star Atlas as a game, power to the people. It's a game about camaraderie uh, and space exploration. So we took the, and it's a very beautiful game running on Unreal Engine 5, Nanite. So they made a trailer already with uh, their own like uh, CGI. So we took bits and pieces of their CGI and coupled with AI uh, that we have, the AI technology, generative technologies that we have, and we wrote the narrative like humans, like our uh, a great um, writer that we regularly work with, Ernie Schenk. Uh, he wrote the narrative uh, together with us, with Gary and I. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a very powerful movie. I invite you. I, I can send you the link. It's a one minute and a half, but I think everybody working with blockchain technologies should listen to it. Like that was the I, I think the most powerful request that was given to us. Mm -hmm. Oh, please do send it to us. I'm sure every myself and everyone watching this would love to, you know, see what um, you've created. And speaking of movies, another one that you're, you know, you're about to, um, you know, release a couple of uh, weeks or months down the line. Uh, that is, uh, I mean, you you've given a two minute promo of that uh, of the project where you've depicted everything from. Uh, uh, the time of uh, Turing to Tesla kind of shown evolution. So could you uh, tell us a bit about the thought process uh, behind it? Oh yeah, it's called uh, from, um, from Big Bang to Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, like, um, like AI, again, I'm not fascinated, but it's kind of cool tool, you know, like it's enabling us make visuals that uh, I cannot make on my own. So you know, I need a brush to paint, so I need AI to visualize uh, parallel processing concepts that my mind dreams or visualizes when my eyes are closed. So again, that, that was a, our attempt to visualize time, like time, show me time. How can you show me time? It's not a clock. Show me time. You cannot see time, can you? And then there's always, um, I don't know if you heard about this um, truth that there is no such a thing as time. It's all happening in the same time. Like it is only eternal now. There's no like time just passed. You know, you cannot hold it. You cannot grasp it. So it's quite, it's quite hard to grasp really time. It's not linear. And I, like I told you earlier, we, uh, we are entering a quantum age. Humanity is in need of understanding its quantum nature. So time is actually a quantum thing as well. It's not linear like we understand. It's cyclical, it's not linear. So that piece, that's an art piece, an immersive art piece. It's our attempt to, it's our attempt to understand time. So it is time visualized um, from again, Big Bang to Bitcoin involving uh, paleontologic times to Greek and Roman warriors cotton factories, um, uh, Abacus, uh, invention of wheel, Turing to Tesla, to Edison, to rockets, to internet, ending with uh, uh, sacred geometry and angels. But very soon, I think we will release the 12 minute experience too. I'm, I'm a little curious. I mean, what does it end with exactly? And why did you choose to kind of end with that point? With sacred geometry and angels, um, it's, I think, it is something intuitive. I cannot quantify and explain you. Um, like, I cannot just, like, uh, be like, here is the formula of why we did that. It is something, uh, angels play a big role in uh, our creative process. It's my own uh, journey that uh, I always feel like I am guided by them, no matter what I'm doing. Whenever I'm in a very tough time in my life or I'm, I am in need of an answer I always receive an answer I swear to God in in the manner of symbols 
So I want like a, that piece honors their presence in our creative process. And my work partner, Gary, he's an artist. Uh, he's a very much, very beautifully obsessed with um, sacred geometry. He paints sacred geometry. And then uh, sacred geometry is his angel. So um, it's his guidance. So I think deep down, if you want us to explain really why it's there, is to tell the world that we are always divided by divine guidance. The other day I uh, read about like, even like the splitting of the atom or even like invention of Google, periodic table, DNA, double helix. The discovery of all these things came to their respecters, inventors in their dreams. They dreamt of them. Can you believe that? They didn't come up with them in their waking lives while calculating something. They were given to them by higher powers. So by visualizing time and the greatest inventions of human history, I think it's only makes sense to be grateful to the ones that gave us these inventions. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 26 years, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that's great. And but I think the last thing uh, is, you know, what would be your one advice to artists worldwide watching this? Uh, know thyself. There's no other advice. Know thyself. Spend time in discovering who you are, your own unique talents. Uh, cultivate positivity. Choose always positivity. Belief. Belief plus action equals success. But in order to be able to believe in yourself, you first have to know yourself. So again, know thyself. Well said, well said, Pinar. So thank you so much for your time today. It's been a real lovely discussion. And, you know, I, I, I really, you were right. We, we, could, we could talk for a very long time on this on yeah. subject. It's really interesting. Thank you so much for uh, creating the space for me to mm -hmm. uh, express myself. Thank you. Thank you. And I will be sending you that link to a Star Atlas film. <laughs>